Hello again YouTube and I'm back with uh, another update video on my system and if you've been watching my uh, uh, my last set of videos um, you know that I recently installed a, cup, a, a micro inverter uh, an APS YC500A uh, micro inverter uh, for my uh, uh, two, four, two uh, 200 watt panels uh, on my pole mount and since I've installed that uh, those that micro inverter I've essentially removed a charge controller that I no longer use and the disconnects in uh, all the wiring so essentially I have one charge controller now with a disconnect in my uh, um, circuit protection uh, automatic circuit breaker here and this, this is another circuit breaker that connects to uh, my inverter to the batteries and stuff like that so um, uh, so essentially it's I've simplified my installation you know if essentially if the if the if the unit is not being used uh, uh, you know just remove it out of the system that's my philosophy and I've also exchanged my 600 watt sun grid tie inverter for a 250 watt grid tie inverter now in my other video I did make the recommendation that it is uh, more beneficial to buy a certified uh, micro grid tie inverter as opposed to the you know the cheap ones you could buy off of eBay and but the but I also said that those cheap ones they do work and in this situation here it's in, uh, it's just in line uh, for use for uh, with my GTI controller um, when my batteries get to 26.3 then this GTI can, uh, controller is just is working like a uh, diversion load controller in in similar fashion. What it does is it will send power to this particular uh, this my, this grid tie inverter at 250 watts. And the reason I changed it out uh, was because I for some reason I get more power out of this this particular unit. This thing will kick out 240 watts every time it comes on. And the other one was only kicking out maybe just over 200 watts. And so I figured uh, if, you know, the panels that are supplying power to my batteries are 270 watts. And so on a good day, if I can get 240 watts, um, can, you know, uh, of usage, you know, it's on in an on and off fashion, then that's pretty good. So I decided to go with that. Now, one caveat with when dealing with these particular grid time murders is the fact that since it's connected to my batteries, I'm going to be pushing this thing to the max. Now, under normal circumstances, um, I would not advise that. Um, but in this such in this situation here, what I've done is you can see this computer fan. This is a 24 volt uh, PC fan, and it's blowing air out. Uh, within this unit underneath here, there is a fan that comes with it, and it was blowing air out as well so what I did was I simply turned it around so it's now is sucking air in and it will travel up and get blown out here so there is some circulation going and therefore the unit it should keep the unit cool now I've been running this for like a couple of days at least and it's, it's running fine and what happens these two uh, 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 wires here are connected directly to the terminal so this fan only comes up, only comes on when the unit is coming it comes on, so it will cycle on and off with the unit itself, so it's not continuously uh, running. And also, I cut a three-inch hole inside of the uh, of the grid tie. You can see it there. Um, if I can show you that, so you can see it on the inside there. There is a three-inch hole in the back of that, and so it's way big enough for you know a lot of air to come out. So essentially, you know, having a fan like this blowing across it is fine. That's great. It blows across. This is just one. This is just one big heat sink. Um, however, I believe a fan actually blowing hot air out of the unit uh, is even better. So you know, I've seen a lot of folks. They have you know, um, you know, fans blowing you know across it and underneath and stuff like that. And that's fine. That's fine. But for me, um, the fact I'm going to be pushing this thing uh, consistently. And it's you know these things they work. It's rated for 250 uh, 250 watts. They work now, but um, they get really hot if you push them really hard. So what we need what we need to do is get a way uh, have a way to blow that hot and get that heat out of the unit. The fans that come with these things, um, I looked at it. They're they're really cheesy fans. They're really small. And not only that, a lot of the electronic components you know are actually blocking the fan on the inside. 
and so it's not really doing a good job okay it's this fan was touching it was sitting right next to a capacitor and it's like well you know it's supposed to blow fan uh, blow heat away from it but you know there's not you know the way it was set up on the inside is not really room enough for good circulation but this thing oh yeah when it when it runs yeah it runs pretty well um and it will blow it will definitely blow things out you know i can keep, i'll give you a demonstration because I'll, I'll kind of force my system to go into uh uh float mode i'm just going multi-stage here uh going to float mode and by it when it goes into float mode what it'll do is it'll just you know i'll bring it up to like you know 26.3 or something and this fan will come on it'll just take a moment um actually i'll what I'll do is I'll actually just rebulk it. And what I'm doing is uh, I'm rebulking, uh, forcing a uh, bulk charge, restarting bulk charge, and it, it'll only do it just for a little bit. And you see, this fan comes on. Um, you know, I'm not, it's not running right now. But I can, uh, I can turn it on. And you can see. So it's, you know, it's it's kicking out the watts now. It's like at 200, it'll kick out 240 watts. And the fan is running nice, it's blowing the air out. This air, and it's also being sucked in here. So it's working pretty well. And, um, and also my unit is, you know, two inches away from the wall. So there is some airflow underneath as well. So I don't, I'm not really worried about, you know, uh, this thing overheating because I'm, I'm, you know, taking this, you know, many steps as I can. See, the other fan is kicked on as well underneath. So it's now sucking air in and blowing air out through here. And uh, I mean, I've watched this thing throughout the day and felt it and stuff like that. It gets warm, um, but it doesn't really get overly hot, excessively hot. It does get warm though. Uh, but anyway, again, when you work with these, these cheap inverters here, obviously, you know, you do so at your own risk. Uh, but anyway, just wanted to kind of you know, keep you folks updated on my system as it continues to grow and expand. And, um, you know, hopefully maybe somebody else will get some ideas. Okay, take care, you two.